Welcome to the Three Wins Podcast brought to you by Legacy Advisory Partners. If you're new to the podcast, Legacy is an Atlanta-based financial services firm that believes that the key to unleashing your company's full potential is to evaluate business performance using the Three Wins Framework. And we use this framework to help guide the topics that we talk about in our podcast. So what exactly are these three wins? Win number one is the shareholder win. As the business owner, what do you want to accomplish financially and by when? Win number two, the company win. What does the company need to achieve to support your financial goals? And finally, win number three, the key leader win. How can the company help key leaders reach their financial goals, which in turn will contribute to both the company and you winning? The idea here is that when you pursue the shareholder, company, and key leader win, all in concert, you will see a level of collaboration in your business that becomes a force multiplier to achieve breakthrough performance. The legacy team calls this dynamic the collaboration effect on profits. And the mission of the Three Wins Podcast is to help you discover and deploy the financial strategies and tools you need to put the collaboration effect on profits and motion in your business and in your personal financial life. So without further ado, let's dive into this next episode of the Three Wins Podcast. All right. Welcome back to the fifth episode of the Three Wins Podcast. My name is Russ Klemmer. I'm the president at Legacy Advisory Partners. I'm joined by two colleagues today, Mark Walker and Matt Joins. Thank you guys for being with us. This is a little bit of a change. We, we normally have Sean Lydon with us leading the way. Uh, and thanks to everybody who's been watching our podcast and uh, helping us, uh, giving us good feedback. We're, we're new to the podcast idea, but we are having a lot of fun with it. And the key is that we're trying to get uh, some good practices and some uh, things we've learned along the way, uh, information we're sharing with our clients, uh, and information we're we're hearing hearing uh, across the across the uh, financial advisory uh, networks that we're a part of, and bringing it to you. And we hope it's applicable. We know that there's some uh, customization that needs to happen uh, for all of our different listeners, uh, especially the business owners uh, who are listening to the, the uh, different podcasts. And uh, but we appreciate you being a part of it, and look forward to uh, our discussion today. So I'm going to moderate and ask some questions, and Mark and Matt are going to field those questions and um, share with us what they've been hearing and some of the best practices that uh, we use here at Legacy. Uh, so just to kick it off, uh, you know what what we're talking about today, and for the next couple of episodes will be how do you make the most of 2020, the second half. So in a couple of days we'll be done with the second quarter of 2020 uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm at an office right now, if you can't tell uh, Matt and Marker back in uh, Atlanta and especially where I am. And I know in different parts, the, the country is opening up and, and uh, a lot of people are getting back to work. There's still, there's uh, elements of caution and safety. They're being employed, which are, which makes sense, but things are getting uh, going again. And what we understand is that uh when you get back to work and when you, when you get going again, there's, there's changes. Nothing is as it, as it seems in, uh, as it seemed in January. So we want to ask the question, uh, how do we make the most of the rest of 2020? And specifically today, it's the idea of knowing your numbers and Matt and Mark have a lot of uh, really, uh, really good keen insights on that for us today. So thanks for both, both of you for joining and we look forward to the podcast today. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Well, that so, was a, is a good point you brought up for us, um, especially being in Georgia. And we were one of the first people to release from the quarantine and kind of start getting back to normal. I had a phone yeah. call with a guy yesterday that's out in California and they're on the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, they're still locked down probably for another month or more. And just remembering, oh yeah, we are 
we are kind of on the forefront of getting back to things, getting yeah. back to business as usual. Whereas there's still a lot of folks out there that they're still in quarantine. They're still, you know, their, their whole idea of how do you make the most out of 2020? They still don't know. They haven't gotten back to it. So maybe they're, um, they're still kind of adapting to quarantine. So it's pretty interesting thinking about that and knowing, you know, the, the U S is just one country, but there's all these different standards throughout the entire country that everyone's taken a different approach. Yeah. Well, they're Californians. It's kind of, you know, it's, you gotta, you gotta, eh, you know, yeah. I'm kidding. No, they're all the way across the world. It, it's a, uh, they're, they're a huge part of the country and so many people live out there. And I think that's the best part of the challenge. You're right. You never, you, you know, different people approaching the, the re-entry question in different ways. That's a good point. Well, when you think about, you know, the, the year 2020, you know, two, zero, two, zero. And so you've heard the phrase from many people saying, I want to redo. You know, yeah. <laughs> wanting, Mulligan. <laughs> you know, thinking about where they started the year, what the expectations were, you know, plans for the year. Um, so not only in your business life, it's a time to reevaluate, you know, in your personal life, you're having to do the same thing. So it's uh, everybody's adjusting expectations, you know, um, planning out how they're going to handle school for their kids in the fall, college, you know, public schools, uh, vacation, you know, every business aspects. Um, so you, you name it, it's, it's time to rethink what's the new normal look like. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I was seeing a couple of different people down here that I know at the beach and in different places. And, uh, you know, you kind of walk up and, and I'll do one of those. Are you shaking hands? Are you elbowing? Or are you just, you know, you know, air high five, something like that. And right. it just depends, you know, you have to be sensitive and, and take caution with that. But, uh, you know, what, it, all of those are the, the, the social parameters, right. Of, of reentry. But, you know, one part of this is making the most is, uh, especially today is really looking at numbers, looking at data. And that's kind of the, 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 the truth behind the, the spirit behind know your numbers because they're yours. They're not anybody else's. They're your companies. And, you know, they're your personal numbers. There are a lot of different, you know, ways you can look at it, but they, the numbers are solid data and you can read them in different ways. But if you haven't organized them, I mean, if you don't know your numbers, then you're a little bit lost. Mm -hmm. in, a good, in a good year, you can hide the fact that you're lost. In a year like this, if you don't know your numbers, then, then you really have a, a hard, uh, you've had a hard time uh, up until this point, I'm sure. And then, you know, you're also looking ahead and saying, you know, what, what's it going to look like? And so uh, there, there's two people who are feeling that, people who have already had a huge impact on their business. And the people who are going to say, hey, in Q1 of 2021, our pipeline is, or our backlog is been burned off. We don't know what's beyond that. Mm -hmm. So we want to help both people on this conversation. We want to say, number one, what are your numbers from the shareholder win perspective, from the number two, from the corporate win perspective, and number three, from the key leader win perspective? Because here at Legacy, that's what we do. We focus on the three wins for business owners because all three have to be balanced. So, Mark, what would you say? You want to you want to kick off with some of the thoughts you had around knowing your numbers on the, the corporate win side? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just kind of following up what Russ mentions, you know, a, a key aspect is uh, knowing your your numbers and, and really, you know, trying to project out your your growth in the future. Uh, so we help corporations put together growth template models, you know, to you know, look what they've done in the past, try to assess, you know, where they're headed in the future. Um, but maybe even more short term than that, which is kind of more pressing is, you know, looking at your historical revenues of, you know, is, are any of your revenues reoccurring that you can kind of count on? Um, how much of your projections are going to be based upon new sales? So in light of our kind of redo or a reevaluating process, we think it's valuable to go back and look at, okay, on your reoccurring revenue, 
do you need to make adjustments to that? Are there some existing clients that, you know, maybe they're not doing as much business as they were before and you need to adjust those number down? Or there could be some, some of your clients or even your business that, you know, numbers have increased. You know, maybe uh, your line of business, you, you are providing a, essential products and, and we've had some of our clients really have breakthrough sales. So uh, could be on the positive or negative side of, of evaluating that. Um, and then looking at your sales opportunities, you know, the, the people that you had been targeting throughout this year in which you had anticipated closing and uh, having reoccurring re or having new revenue on, you know, do you need to move that back or are they not even a prospect anymore? So this is a really good, good opportunity for you to really understand, you know, where you're at from the revenue standpoint. And then another key component that you really want to get a tight grasp on is, is your accounts receivable and invoicing process. So we come in contact with clients often that, you know, they're doing a good amount of work, but they're having trouble kind of keeping up with the invoicing and they may have a large accounts receivable and they get in a cash flow crunch. So how can you tighten and shorten that time frame? So you know, maybe it's when you're in your invoicing, making sure your contact person at the company has received that. Find out what their terms of payment are. Um, when they say they're going to pay it, you know, can you, if you haven't received it, can you follow up a few days afterwards and say, just letting you know, we haven't received these, this payment that you, you said was going to come in in a friendly manner. And, you know, all those things can kind of shorten the time frame and, and help you keep afloat uh, while things are going on. Mark, as you mentioned, that uh, a client comes to mind um, a couple of years ago, they went through uh, a struggle knowing where their money was. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a, accounts receivable, uh, a lot of slack in that process. And uh, it was to the point where it wasn't the fact that they uh, were short on new prospects. They had a lot of orders, bidding projects all the time, but it was a major cash flow crunch. Yes. And so, like I said, in, in the good years, you can kind of hide that sometimes, but this was one of those where even, even though it was a really good year, um, they were having some major issues. And so, um, you know, they, they, they went through that. They, they really put the hard work into getting those expectations with their vendors and, and clients uh, tightened up. And right now, they're applying, like you said, they're applying those same principles now in a time where it's really difficult uh, sometimes to get money from vendors or from clients. And everybody's trying to hold on to the, as much cash as possible. Uh, not that they're bad clients, not that they're bad vendors, they're relationships, but they're just being as careful as possible. And the, but the principle is uh, this business owner that I'm, I'm talking about knows where the money is at. They know with a great deal of confidence uh, what they can and cannot uh, accept for, as far as different terms, what's that going to mean over here for this relationship. And so it's been, uh, it's, he's been, uh, he's had a, a, not an easier time going through this, but at least a more confident time going through this, knowing where his numbers are at. And that's really part of the key, having that, that peace of mind, knowing that's a, that's a, that's a really good point, Mark. Well, also um, your, your, your key leaders. So making sure your key leaders know where you are financially. So, you know, mm -hmm. you want to set up a routine with your leadership team that you're reviewing your after you've gone through this reevaluation process, mm -hmm. made your projections for the end of the year, and you know you can come into agreement of all right, how can we salvage the rest of this year and get their buy-in? So they they understand that hey, if we make these tweaks or you know modifications, and we um, identify the the sales opportunities and 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 go after those and have a good process. And then on our invoicing, if we're, you know, if it's your key contact that you've helped bring to the table, you know, maybe a, a nice email or a phone call of, of trying to move things along 
really helps the team. So everybody's kind of weighing in, rowing the same direction with you. Yeah, it's good. It, you know, in our model, we talk about the key leader win. And uh, Matt, we're going to get to the shareholder win in just a second. I want you to weigh in on that, but um, and feel free to weigh on this too. But Mark, what do you? What are some? What are some benefits to um, think about for business owners? What are some things to think about under the key leader win as they go through this? As far as getting everybody refocused, because you know, here here with our company and and just about everybody we've talked with, the numbers are different. Some some forecasts have been blown out of the water. Um, and for uh, our clients who have taken the time to really get their folks plugged into the, the number and the target for the year to incentivize them towards reaching that target, uh, the number's different. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we don't say, hey, just drop it. You know, it's, it, it, we're never going to reach the number we wanted. So, you know, oh, well, you got six more months for people to work hard together. What does that look like? Yeah. Well, a key component in the three wins is, is how you uh, keep your key leaders engaged in the process. So, you know, we help corporations develop long-term incentive plans or LTIP plans that, you know, if they are helping grow the success of the business, maybe, you know, maybe they have no ownership in the company and, and you don't want to give them any ownership, um, but a way that they can you know, help you grow the business is uh, when you're agreeing to the terms of what some targets are mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of minimum targets you need to keep reach as a shareholder, anything above that could be shared to your, your leadership team. So they could get a portion of the increased revenues. So if they see what the opportunity has before them for the remainder of 2020 and, and know that, hey, if we work hard, you know, this is what my credit could be towards helping our company achieve these goals, then, you know, I'm, I'm seeing what, what's there before me. I'm seeing what, what I can do to, to move the needle for the corporation or the shareholder and how I benefit in that. Uh, so we think through that process, they're going to be much more engaged and give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, to reach those goals. Yeah. And it's all relative. So, I mean, if you're thinking about, um, 2020 benchmarks, um, in relation to 2019, you're not really doing yourself any favors because we didn't have to deal with, uh, a pretty serious, uh, chain of events that have kind of led us to where we are. So it's all relative. So, um, going back and reassessing the benchmarks and just kind of being, uh, cognizant of, okay, well, this isn't where we want to be, but you know, it is what it is. We're playing with the cards that we were dealt. We can still make the best out of it. And there's a lot of opportunity because if there's a lot of folks that aren't, uh, kind of approaching it with that same attitude and people are going to go out of businesses, you're going to see, um, businesses fold and there's going to be more market share, than there was. So the, the good part about any sort of strife or, you know, negative economy or negative market influences is it means opportunity. As long as you're staying on top of it and, you know, really, if you want it more, you're going to, you're going to get it. That really is it. Trying to find the, the, the adjustment to the market. The market still exists, but there is an adjustment in being nimble in that way. And to mark your point, it, you know, it, it takes more than just the, the business owner or the shareholders. Uh, you know, the, the, the ones who say, no, I'm the only one that can figure this out and everybody else needs to follow my lead. That's a really difficult business to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we like to teach is that, you know, to the degree the shareholder wants to, why don't we try to, you know, grow the business and the leadership team, incentivize and retain them to think with an owner minded perspective so that the business owner, the shareholder can get out of the middle of the circle and ultimately the business's value can grow because the owner is not in the middle of it. Right. They, the owner has an asset that can grow in value and being able to do that through a time like this to show a business's and a team's resiliency in a time like this is an important thing uh, for future uh, investors in your business to consider as a, uh, as a, as a way to, you know, knowing that 
this has got the business has the opportunity to weather a storm like 2020. So Matt, on the shareholder side, there's got to be, you know, it, it, it's one thing when you know uh, key leaders and employees they kind of look at it and say, all right, well, you know, this is going to be a bad year, uh, or it's going to be a different year, or you know, maybe it is going to be, you know, just fine. You know, maybe there's some some uh, companies out there that are not hurting, but there are companies out there that are they're they're trying to figure out what's going to happen, and we want and you know the message today is to make the most of 2020, knowing their numbers, but for shareholders, you know, sometimes they have this facade where they're just you know everything's fine, you know we're going to make it, and their own win, the shareholder win, is you know that that's the last thing they think about. You know, we're not, I'm not going to worry about it. it. It's, you know, I know it's, it's from a personal investment standpoint and the ability for the company to make money and distributions that I was counting on to go do X, Y, and Z, financial planning, investment management, what I'm trying to accumulate. You know, that may be something they push to the back burner. Uh, but what would you say to shareholders as far as their financial planning in a, in a time like this, knowing their own numbers? What are some areas and recommendations you for you would uh, give to shareholders right now? Yeah, one of the we've always talked about emergency accounts. You know, that's always like the number one thing from a financial standing, financial planning standpoint is have an emergency account. And this has been kind of the perfect example of why you need to have just some cash available uh, that you can go and access. It's not going to you don't have to worry about market volatility. You know, these things aren't invested because we saw a huge downturn in the market about the time when people needed additional cash flow. So, you know, if you have a, a separate account in your bank account, just some cash that you can go and access that has minimum impact on the rest of your plan, that's, this was the exact time to do that. And there's a lot of folks that did not have that. And that was really what led to a lot of the, uh, you know, government stimulus. We saw stimulus not only for uh, companies, but for individuals as well. And it's because, you know, people didn't have the savings that they needed to. Now, you know, is that going to create a mindset of, well, you know, why I didn't need it this time. The government bailed me out. Is that really the pattern that we want to get into? No, not really. So making sure that you have the means to kind of weather that storm. And uh, we say three to six months of expenses, if you can comfortably pare back, you know, a, p a penny saved is a penny earned. If you can com comfortably pare back your uh, discretionary expenses, because one of the good things that came out of this whole thing is uh, my wife and I spent a lot less money. Uh, there was a lot less, you know, eating out. There was a lot less events that you could go to to spend money on. So, you know, looking at our credit card statements uh, following, you know, February or March, when everything started to lock down, that was at least a little bit of relief is, uh, you know, seeing that we spent a lot less money. But that's really, you know, a key is making sure that you're planning for situations like this. You know, we, we want to always hope for the best. But we're, we're really doing ourselves a disservice if we're not planning for the worst. So, you know, having some capital, having something that is going to continue, continue to float you and not really hurting you from any sort of opportunity standpoint. You know, you're not having to cut back on things that you don't want to or you, you just can't afford. And then kind of going into this whole debt cycle. That's a really tough and a really slippery slope to get out of. So anytime we can avoid that is uh, always a good thing. So just at this point, it's a little too late to kind of go back and do anything other than learn. So using it as an opportunity, using it to learn going forward. So we have built into whatever numbers we're looking at, be it our personal numbers or our business numbers, we have the means to kind of self-insure ourselves even a little bit. And that's going to, you know, give us these opportunities that if someone else doesn't have the same means, that's an opportunity they didn't have. And that's going to give you a leg up in this competitive environment. Yeah, Matt, just to add to that, that you're, you're kind of referencing, you know, we call, we like to use that term as dry powder. So, yeah. you know, you want to have dry powder on the personal side, 
but then also on the business side. So I think um, I would say majority of businesses, you know, didn't have as much dry powder as, you know, maybe we should have in the midst of kind of going through this. So um, going forward, you know, you can factor that in of, you know, what, if we did have a downturn in the economy, you know, how much cash do we need as a company to have set aside, you know, through this, as you've also mentioned, Matt, you know, there would be some attrition. So could there be some opportunities that you see a business you've been eyeing and now is the perfect time to sweep, swoop in and, you know, make an offer, you know, maybe grow your business through acquisition. Yep. So you could use those uh, resources, you know, to gain market share. Uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of ways that the shareholder can win in the midst of you know, times like this. Yeah, good or bad. Um, if your industry was doing well during all of this, you were one of the few that were, you know, creating these necessary products or, you know, you saw a ramp up in production or sales or whatever it was. Having more of that resources uh, gives you the means to expand it even further. So if there's a big ramp up in your industry, you're ready to go. You can, you know, ramp up and fill that need and grow, you know, take advantage of all these sales. If, if you're in a negative industry, you are impacted. Having that additional cash, yeah, you can find acquisitions, people that can't weather the storm. They need the cash. Well, I've got some, let me buy your business. Oh, by the way, it's 30% of what it was, you know, last year. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a really good opportunity uh, either way, just to have some money on the sidelines to give you that flexibility. Yeah, that's, that's really good thoughts. And, and, you know, for just to kind of recap a little bit on the three different wins, uh, as we kind of bring it, bring it home is the, the idea that if you're a shareholder uh, and you are later in your career as an owner of a business, then there's things to think through. If you're younger and you've only owned your business for a couple of years, you've built it up, it's, you know, it's growing, it's successful, you have some recovery time. That's, that was a part of your point, Matt. You want to learn from what's happened and, and continue to grow. If you're older, then, you know, it, it may be helpful to, to stop and talk with someone. Uh, Matt, Mark, I know you're both available uh, to walk through that part of that conversation uh, with uh, our listeners and, and as we do with our clients. Uh, under the corporate win, it really is stopping and knowing your numbers. If you have any slack in your accounts receivable invoicing processes, sharpen that up, tighten that up as quickly as possible in this in the in the present moment uh, and then also knowing your forecasting being able to stop and, and look at if i pull these different levers what's going to happen to my bottom line and how do i prepare to make the most of the rest of the year and also in in 2021 and then under the uh, key leader win give reassess based on what your forecast shows knowing your numbers and then get your key leaders tuned into the into the new targets there are new targets. There's no going back and saying we're going to recover and try to make the most of and whatever happens, happens. No, you've got to give hungry, healthy leaders the best chance to succeed. Now, even if that goal looks drastically different, give them a new goal to strive towards. And so maybe a good next step, Mark and Matt, um, you know, we've done some, some forecasting work with some good friends. I think the next episode is maybe uh, get to, to see what John and Emmett have to say maybe about some processes and um, who we're referring to is John Coffin and Emmett Moore, some good friends of ours here in Atlanta who have had a very successful career helping businesses forecast well to get them ready, uh, both to get ready for on the buying side, but also on the growth side to hold on to the business and grow for a while. So we look forward there with PGA uh, here in Atlanta and we look forward to having them on. Uh, make sure you tune in for, into that episode. Uh, but thanks, guys, uh, for your insights and, and your direction here today. And uh, if, as you're listening, if you have any questions, feel, feel uh, free to either leave us a comment or uh, shoot us a message over at uh, www.legacyadvisorypartners.com. Uh, thanks, everybody, and look forward to uh, our next uh, podcast here in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to learn more about how to apply the three wins framework to your business, 
Go to LegacyAdvisoryPartners.com backslash the three wins. That's with the numeral three. And download the free white paper, The Three Wins, How to Unleash the Collaboration Effect on Profits in Your Business. And I'll also have a link in the show notes for you. So until next time, see you then.